Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update for June 25th, the last update for the first half of the year. I'm here with Dan Bingham and Chris Glossy from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Dan, gentlemen, thank you for being here. Uh, Dan, a lot of the activity and interest in the markets this week uh, wasn't necessarily on Wall Street, but uh, from DC. Uh, why don't we uh, start there and uh, what are people looking at? Sure, I guess the uh, biggest news um, has been the continuation of the uh, uh, negotiations over the potential of another uh, infrastructure plan. And it sounds like there's uh, broad bipartisan agreements in place where the potential of passing a 579 billion infrastructure plan seems like it's uh, uh, somewhat likely here. And some of the uh, interesting pieces about that, a lot of that is direct grants to, uh, to state and local governments, which do provide the vast majority of public sector infrastructure uh, expansion. A lot of times those federal grants are uh, distributed through matching fund programs. So that usually leads to an increase in new money muni bond issuance as, as local governments are raising funds to, to help qualify for those federal grants. Um, other programs we saw are there's a component for uh, bringing back uh, Build America bonds like program taxable bonds with a subsidy for interest, as well as expanding private activity bonds. So municipal bonds are playing a huge role in this package. Um, any uh, feedback yet that you're hearing from sources about how that might change investor demand or, or impact uh, valuations? Yeah, the, the, we, did, we didn't see much of a reaction. And I think that it, uh, people are still trying to get their arms around exactly uh, what impact uh, things will have. So if there's a, an, uh, a BABS type program that's reintroduced, does that uh, result in much higher taxable issuance and less tax exempt issuance? Um, this the prospect that you could have advanced refundings um, and various other things that could affect supply. But um, as I say, I think the market participants are still trying to determine um, what in, what uh, kind of impact that will have on on future supply, and whether the coalition can hang together. Uh, we say the White House is negotiating with a uh, bipartisan group about ten senators, but they'll need more than that to get this passed. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, what kind of activity did you see in the market this week? I know. Uh, Cash flows to mutual funds remain strong, uh, just a shade under $2 billion for the week. Uh, what other kind of activity was there? Yeah, so the, you know, the interesting thing as we wind through the uh, first half here is uh, year to date, we've seen 46.2 billion of, uh, of inflows. That uh, equate, or that uh, is um, relative to 40.1 billion last year and 92 billion in 2019. So we're on pace to, to slightly exceed 2019's inflows. So continuation of the same theme we've really seen. Um, muni ratios had adjusted a little bit last week with the strong treasury rally. We've actually seen treasury yields increase a little bit in here with the 10 year currently at a 153 and the 30 year at a 215. So that's up about uh, 12 basis points on the long end of the treasury market. Um, and we've seen you know, the continuation of slightly better ratios where the 10 year ratio is currently at 66% and 30 year ratios uh, holding just above 70%. And Chris, is that partially because the, the new issue calendar has come back to life in the last couple of weeks? What did you see on uh, the primary market side? Exactly. As we come into the uh, end of the first half of the of the year, uh, BAM actually had $163 million, million of bonds priced this week, and that was across nine states. Uh, some of the highlighted transactions this week are a $49 million Laredo, Texas transactions with RBC as the lead underwriter. And there were two transactions in West Virginia we want to highlight, both for Putnam, West Virginia, one water and one sewer. There were two series for roughly $40 million of par, and that was underwritten by Cruz & Associates. And to round out the week for the, the sizable deals, we had a St. Tammany Parish Hospital Service District price with Raymond James for roughly $24 million. And that, that deal is actually backed by an unlimited uh, tax geo pledge. Interesting. And so next week, uh, I think people will probably be uh, ducking out a little bit early ahead of a uh, 4th of July long weekend. But what does the calendar look like? Right. As we head into the 4th of July weekend, the calendar is expected to be roughly $6 billion. For BAM, there's roughly 120 million of bonds on the on the calendar for next week. Uh, the main transaction to highlight is a $36 million Wright State University deal in Ohio, underwritten by J.P. Morgan. That will come across two series. And certainly, I think one of the things to look at in here, and as we're pivoting to the second half of the year, there is some sense in the market that uh, issuers may have been holding back on their issuance plans, waiting to see what the infrastructure plan uh, 
held for them as we get more details and whether or not advanced fundings are included in it, whether or not bank qualified are included in it, that might shake loose some of that supply and then and, and bring that back into the market. Uh, so we'll just uh, see how that plays out. And it'll be a, a, not only a months long story, not a week long story. So, we'll, right. uh, so gentlemen, thank you for, uh, for being with us this week and uh, we'll uh, see you again in the uh, second half of the year. Thanks, Mike. Great, thanks, Mike. Investing in America's infrastructure drives our country forward. Municipal bonds help strengthen America's backbone and connect us all through essential investment in local opportunities. At Build America Mutual, we maximize the safety and stability of municipal bond investments. That means a bright future for our communities and investors' portfolios. Learn more about the exceptional security of BAM-insured bonds 